All right, so this is one of the craziest cases of spouse revenge I've ever seen, where this man literally took, if I can't have you, nobody can, to a whole nother level. So in 2013, Mary Nielsen had met this man, Adam Price, on an online dating site. And a couple years later, in 2016, they ended up getting married. Now, shortly after they got married to one another, they had their first child, Emily Price, and a couple years later, they had their first son, Theodore Price. So some of you may be saying like, that doesn't sound too bad in the marriage though, but in an interview that Mary would go ahead and give, she would say that her marriage to Adam was a nightmare because he was both abusive, controlling, and manipulative throughout their whole entire marriage. Now the family lived in Bellevue, Nebraska, but due to the whole entire abuse in their relationship, Mary couldn't take anymore, so she grabbed her and her kids and moved to Illinois. And now during that move, she went ahead and filed a divorce because she didn't want to be married to him any longer. Now, during the whole divorce proceeding, the judge would go ahead and grant them visitation, where the kids would visit the father weeks at a time, where they would travel between Nebraska and Illinois. Now, as part of that agreement, Adam would have to have daily communication with Mary, so which means that whenever she called or texted him about the children, he would have to answer that calls and texts. So, in March of 2021, during one of Adam's visitation, Mary would go ahead and drop her kids off over in Bellevue, Nebraska, so that way they can do their week-long visitation with their father. Mary would go ahead and kiss her kids goodbye and tell them to have fun with their father. Now, when Mary had returned back to Illinois, she was trying to stay in contact with them, see how they were doing, but she started noticing Adam starting to act a little weird, where his text messages were getting shorter and shorter, and he, and every time she do Zoom calls, he never stay on those calls for very long. Now, Mary would think this is odd, but she just figured that he was just being a dick and decided to just brush it off for a little bit. The reason why Mary thought that he was acting this way because when she went to go drop the kids off, she had asked him about changing the custodial agreement where instead of them spending weeks at a time at his place, that it would be narrowed down to weekends and school vacations. And then putting in his request, Adam just went ahead and brushed it off and was like, ah, I'll think about it. So Mary thought everything was fine until March 15th of 2021 when all of a sudden, all communication stopped. So throughout the day, Mary had tried to get in contact with Adam, where she would text him, call him, even try to video chat him, but he's never replied to either one of those. And so she assumed like maybe they were just having fun and he couldn't get to his phone. Now, as the day got later, Mary got a little bit more worried because she knows that Adam is supposed to be on the court order agreement where he's supposed to maintain contact and he never replied to any of her responses. So around 9.50 p.m. on March 15th of 2021, where she hadn't heard back from her all day, she went ahead and called the police and asked to do a welfare check to make sure her children are okay. The Bellevue Police Department would go ahead and stop by and check on the children, see if they're okay. When they got there, they knocked on the doors, where they got no reply. So when they got no reply at the door, the police would go ahead and leave, thinking that they were just out for the night. Police would notify Mary, saying they went by the house and got no response, and had told her that maybe they're just out for the night. Mary said okay, and so she thought that she would go ahead and try again later. And so throughout the night, she still didn't hear no response, including the next morning on March 16th, when she still didn't get a response. So around 8.59 a.m., she went ahead and called the Bellevue Police Department again to do another welfare check. The police will again go to the residence where they got no response and just chugged up that they might be out for the day. So again, Mary, feeling that this is not right, felt that he's supposed to be in contact with her at all times while he had the children. And so she called a family friend up to go by the house and check on her children for her. So the friend, let's go ahead and call him Tracy. There, they went ahead and searched around the whole entire house, tried to see if they can find a way in. They realized the door was unlocked. And so upon entering the door, they went ahead and told Mary, like, hey, we're in the house. We're going to go ahead and check on the children, see if they're okay. And upon reaching to the children's bedroom, they got an unruly sight. Because at first seeing the children, they just assumed the children were asleep. And they told Mary, like, hey, it looked like the children are sleeping in their beds. And upon further investigation, that's when they realized that the children weren't all right. And so all of a sudden, the phone ended abruptly. And Mary went frantic trying to figure out what was going on. But the reason why the call ended abruptly because Tracy had called 911 to let them know that he had found his friend's children unalive in their own beds. So the police got to the house as quickly as they can and started doing an investigation on what had happened. While during this time frame, Mary was being frantic where she was trying to call and see what was going on, including going to social media to try and get information on what was going on with her children. Now, during the police investigation, they noticed that Adam was nowhere to be found. Now, while the coroner was taking a look at the bodies, he realized that the children were strangled in their sleep. And so they realized that five-year-old Emily Price and three-year-old Theodore Price had both lost their life to their father. So upon realizing that Adam was the prime suspect, they put in hand and put out a bolo to be on the lookout for Adam Price. And upon their investigation, they kind of realized that the days leading up to the children's being unalive 
They noticed that Adam had went to two different ATM machines, taking out a total of $1,500. Now, while the Bellevue Police Department was looking for Adam, they didn't realize that Adam had skipped town shortly after taking his kids off the census. Because shortly after he took his kids off the census, he traveled 1,600 miles all the way to California. Now, upon arriving in California, Adam would do two of the dumbest things I've ever seen, where he actually confessed to what he did to two different priests. He would go ahead and tell both priests that he had unlived his children and he is currently on the run from law enforcement. Now, why he may have told these priests why he did it, nobody knows because it could be from guilt or he may have had a mental breakdown from everything that went on. But the thing with priests, even though some of the things you may tell them can be confidential, such as cheating on your spouse or cheating on your diet, but when it comes to unaliving somebody, that's something that they can't keep to themselves. So 25 hours later after his children were found, Adam Price was arrested by California police where he was extradited back to Nebraska. Now, shortly after Adam was caught, Mary had got the bad news of finding that her children were unalive and that her ex-husband was the one that caused it all. Mary felt distraught because these were her babies and they meant everything to her. And the fact that he would do something to his own children begged no forgiveness. Now, some of you may be wondering why would Adam do something like this, and he would fall into the typology of spousal revenge. So now, what spousal revenge refers to as is when a parent, either mother or father, but most commonly a father, deliberately unalives his children, all because they want revenge on their spouse. And so, since it was believed that he was both abusive, controlling, and manipulative, all because Mary had left and took his children from him, he felt that... If he can't have his own children, neither can she. Now, after Adam was arrested, they would go ahead and interrogate him and try to figure out why he would do something like this. And what they found was shocking in which they asked him, like, if you can do the day over again, would you redo everything? And he said, no, I would do it all over again. And by telling the police that he would do this again, this let them know that this was not a spur of the moment type thing. This was premeditated. Now, some of you may be wondering that the police could have figured this out if they had just went to the house when they went there the first couple of times and found that nobody was there. But the thing was that based on the spokesman for the police department, he had stated that because there wasn't a sufficient amount of evidence, they could not force entry into the house. So which was why when they went there both times, they and they knocked on the door and they ended up having to leave because they didn't have enough evidence to go inside the house or have reason to believe that the children were in danger at that time. So in February of 2024, Adam Price's trial will begin where his defense team will argue saying that he was a father that was in crisis because his marriage was falling apart, his wife and kids moved to a different state, and that he had no intentions of killing his kids, he just wanted to leave them and go somewhere else. Now the prosecution argued that this was premeditated because throughout the time he had his kids, he went to two different ATM machines and took out a total of $1,500, as well as he took both his trash and his recycle bin out the day early, right before he unalived them. So he already had the idea of ending their lives and running right afterwards. So on February 29th of 2024, the trial would conclude with closing arguments where the jury would go ahead and deliberate for only a few hours where they came back with a guilty verdict. Now some of y'all may be thinking that he should have got the death sentence, but the prosecutor wanted to go for that. But due to Nebraska laws, where anytime there's a murder involved, they are given a mandatory life sentence. So as of right now, Adam is currently sitting in prison on two counts of first degree murder charges, where he is serving life without parole. So that concludes our story. If you like videos like these, I will be posting at least once or twice a week. And go ahead and leave a comment down below.